We sat in the car for hours and hours and hours. Red flags when it comes to relationships. Everything is a red flag. I'm afraid of who I will bring a child into this world with. I think y'all are not scared enough. If it's reckless, do it. back to my channel and for those who are new my name is Natasha go ahead and subscribe thank you so much so as you can see by the title I'm gonna be doing like a girl chat type of video um, I want to do these more often so they're not really gonna be like chit chats about me because we can only talk about me so much um, they're gonna be like just on topics that are going on in pop culture in the world um, if you guys have advice or just any kind of questions that you do want to ask me maybe but it's not gonna just be on me so I'm gonna do these more often I will be asking you guys on Instagram when I do do these so make sure you guys are following me on Instagram at Tasha Washa if you're not already that's where these questions topics advice will be coming from today okay so I want to do something a little fun so I feel like every time I do this I'm gonna have like some kind of drink a cocktail or something so today's drink of choice is a lemon drop of course I feel like that's like the perfect way to start this video I haven't had a lemon drop all year guys this is the first one and I'm excited to get this drink okay so I'm gonna be making one and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make one at home too also do not drink if you are not under 21 and do not drink and drive I'm gonna repeat that. Do not drink if you are under 21 and do not drink and drive. All the drinks that I feature in this um, this kind of video, series, whatever you wanna call it, will not be alcoholic, some will be different, but um, yeah, just I'll be showing you guys the drink of the day. So today's drink is a lemon drop. I want my lemon drop, so let's go on over to the kitchen and get this drink, okay? If you let me, here's what I'll do. I still feel the same What's a life with no fun Please don't be so ashamed I've had mine, you've had yours We both know, we know I won't catch you like I will My only wish is I die real Cause that truth hurts and those lies heal And you can't sleep thinking that he lies still So you cry still, tears all in a pillowcase Big girls all get a little taste out Pushing me away so I give a space out Dealing with a heart that I didn't break I'll be there for you, I would care for you I keep thinking you just don't know Okay, so we're back. Um, that was my first time making a lemon drop, so I'm not sure how that footage came out, but it does taste good, and I'm hot already. If I look like I'm sweating, I am, because I took a sip, and baby. Cheers, okay? Like I said, I had you guys ask me questions on Instagram, and there's a few questions. There is quite a few questions, and I feel like the easiest way to go about this is to just kind of break them into categories and answer the question in like subcategories, you know? So it's gonna be very chaotic, I'm gonna be rambling, get you a drink, get you a snack, do your skincare routine, do something productive while you're listening to this. You don't have to sit here and watch me. You can still listen to me while you're doing something else, okay? I'm trying to get that sugar off my lip. So the first topic of today is going to be, of course, dating, okay? And also if you see sugar on my lip, just let it be, y'all. Just let it be. Just let it be. We already know the vibes, okay? So anyways, the first topic is going to be dating, all right? The girls want to know about dating. It's it's hard out here, apparently. So um, there's quite a few questions. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is dating apps. The person was not clear. They just said dating apps. I'm assuming you want to know my thoughts on them. So I personally think dating apps are a great tool. For dating, I do think that people abuse them. Um, I feel like there's a lot of creeps. It's very hard to trust somebody and willingly go on a date. It's a very hard thing to do. Um, but if you're somebody that doesn't go out a lot, um, you may not have like a friend group or something, but you still do want to date. You want to meet men or women. Um, 
a dating app is a good way to go about doing that. I just spilled this drink on my couch, baby. Oh no. I will say though with dating apps, just set your boundaries and that's it. Like don't have anybody, I don't know, coming to your house just because they they swiped right on you or left on you or whatever. Don't have anybody pulling up on you. Those kind of things, you know, that's not safe. That's not very smart. No matter how trustworthy you think that these people are, no matter how good it sounds, don't do it. I have been seeing quite a few um, stories on Twitter about girls that are meeting these guys on like Tinder, Hinge, whatever dating apps there are, and they're inviting these guys to their house and then getting robbed. Ma'am, no. No, 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 no. So I would just say, you know, date cautiously like you would with somebody that you met in person. Don't be too trusting. Um, personally, dating apps are not for me. That's just me. This is me being me. It's not my thing. But I don't think there's anything wrong with dating apps. Um, you know, put yourself out there. All right, so moving along, we're gonna keep this first episode kind of short and sweet. And then as we grow, we're gonna just kind of like narrow down the topic. So if you guys have advice, that will be the topic of the day. But there was quite a few questions, so yeah. Um, the next one was dating outside your race. I don't see an issue with it. Like what you like. Some people are completely against it. That is fine, that is your preference. And some people are okay with it. It shouldn't be a debate. It shouldn't be an issue. Um, I don't know. I don't. I know some people are strongly against it. I wouldn't be against dating outside of my race. I just feel like anybody that you meet, there's going to be a different. You guys have had different upbringings. So whether they're black or white, you guys were raised differently. It's all about your connection. If you guys like each other, want to be with each other, do what you do, okay? Like, there's nothing wrong with dating outside of your race. And don't let social media tell you otherwise. Do you think dating is hard these days or do you think people are exaggerating? I need another one of these. We're not even halfway through. Um, I think both. I think that people date people that they know aren't their type. And I'm not just talking physically their type. You see the red flags of that person and you still continue to date them just to turn around and complain. So, although there are gonna be people that you think, oh, he's like cute and he has a nice job and he's sweet, but then he ends up being a psychopath, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna meet people like that. But for the most part, I do think a lot of people put themselves in predicaments where they date people because they're bored or they just wanna, you know, waste some time, add to their roster and stuff hits the fan so I just say date people that you like stop wasting your time just stop wasting your time I do think that it's very healthy to date different people and to meet people and mingle and all that but just stop dating people that you know you're not interested in and it will eliminate all of that it really will like I promise you if you stop dating people that you know you do not like dating will not be hard oh this is a good one okay someone said how to feel more confident on first dates, getting rid of fear and date jitters. You have to date more. That's the only way to get over it. Me at my grown age, if I go on a date tomorrow, my stomach's gonna be in knots all day. Um, and I would say another, another tip is don't drag it out. So if you meet a guy um, this weekend, Try to go out with him in the week or that weekend. Do not drag it out because the more you drag it out, the more comfortable you're going to be with flaking, changing the plans, this and that. Go on the date, get acquainted with that person and see if you even like that person. A lot of times we drag those things out and you've been talking to this person, texting this person back and forth for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, and you guys haven't went on a date yet or met each other up again since the initial meet or however you met whatever and then when you actually spend time with them you realize you don't like them but now you're kind of I don't want to say locked in but you feel kind of like stuck in a sense does that make sense I just kind of went a different direction with that question but do you get what I'm saying I would just say if you meet somebody try to date them immediately so that you can get comfortable with them and you'll continue to go on more dates you'll do more things with them you'll become more comfortable with them and you won't have that like weary feeling because I know exactly what feeling you're talking about because I get it every time even if I go on a date with somebody over and over again I get the same feeling I'd be like oh my gosh like something about just like 
it dating is dating is stressful okay <laughs> like when it's time for me to go on a date i feel like everything is just doesn't look right my hair i hate it my outfit i hate it because it's like i don't want to be too dressy I don't want to look like i'm trying too hard and i'm like i don't want to look bummy and look like i ain't got no damn sense and it just is really really stressful so the only way to kick that habit is to just do it more often um and maybe even with different people don't you have that's why I just said, I know it's going to be very contradicting, but that's why I just said you have to date. It's very important to date, especially in your, you can date whenever, but especially um, when you're younger, it's important to date and experience different people and be acquainted with different kinds of men and different kinds of dates and experiences. Because if you date one person, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with dating one person in your life, but if you only date one person and then God forbid you guys break up or something and then you have to start dating again, it's going to be hard. So if you are in your youth and you're in your prime and the boys is on your body, go on those dates, kick those jitters out the way and live your life. Not me opening my email. Oh my gosh. My first date ever. So this is actually really funny. This was one of the um, first questions last night and I was on the phone with my best friend when I read it and we were like, I was like, what the heck was my first date? Mind you, this has been my best friend since like the seventh grade. So we know everything about each other. I'm like, was it this person or was it that person? And we was like going down and we just had like had a little flashback moment. But um, so my first date was, I was like 19 or 20. I'm not sure, but I was a late bloomer guys, whatever. Um, I did not date in high school at all. I never went on any dates. I never dated anybody in high school. I didn't have a boyfriend, none of that. So, yeah. So, I actually went on this date with a boy from high school. We did not talk or date in high school, but we were like associates. Um, he asked me on a date. Um, and I was kind of like hesitant only because I was like, you ain't trying to talk to me in high school. Why you want to talk to me now? Why you want to talk to me now? Why all of a sudden you on my body? Why you want to take me out on a date now? But I went, cause he was cool. He was cool. We just didn't really like talk in high school, right? So, um, what happened? So yeah, he came to my house and mind you, I don't let people pick me up um, for a date, but I knew him and we were acquainted. So like, it was cool. Um, and he lived like down the street from me. But if it was somebody else, baby, no. Do not let these, that's my ice machine if you guys hear something. Do not let these boys pick you up. I'm so sorry. I know it seems like so perfect, but people are crazy these days. But anyways, so he picked me up. And when this boy picked me up, do you know he had the biggest bottle of Ciroc in his car? <laughs> he had the biggest freaking bottle of Ciroc in his car. And I'm looking like, and he had it like in the middle and then he's like yeah i got my dad to get us get us get this for us and i'm like okay mind you i didn't drink so i was like okay so me being the person i am i'm like i grab the drink and i like put it kind of under the seat because we're both under 21 and we're driving with this big bottle of liquor and you're not supposed to be drinking and driving like i just said and you're not supposed to be having liquor you're not supposed to have liquor in your car period let's start there and it was just, it was, <laughs> yeah. So um, he like poured up a cup um, and he didn't even drink it. Like he was just trying to be like macho, cool. Like, And I did it. I think he poured me a cup, but I don't think I drank it because I don't recall any chasers. I literally just recall two cups in the cup holder and this big old bottle of Ciroc. So we were going to the movies. That's the thing. The date was the movies, you guys. So we're going to the movies and we're like going to the city. Um, and I'm like, why couldn't we just go to the movies like around the corner? Like, it's just the movies. He's, not my ice machine. So he's like, he's like, I'm just trying to treat you nice. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. Let me shut up. Let me shut up, child. So I know we didn't end up watching the movie there. It was either sold out or sold out or we were late or something so we ended up coming back to this side of town we went to a movie over here and then he like snuck me in his house <laughs> he like snuck me in his house and we literally i we just sat on his bed and he watched video games i mean he played video games and then he took me home we sat in the car 
for hours and hours and hours. I could do that. <laughs> Please take a little drop. No, but um, yeah, we sat in the car for hours, we talked, and then that was it. That was my first date. I want to say it was at like 20, you guys. And you know what's so funny? I'm going to insert a freaking picture because I remember exactly what I wore this night. And I found my Tumblr the other day and I found this freaking picture of me. Young me. I remember I had a fresh sewing that day. My head, my head was on fire. Y'all know I'm tenderheaded, okay? My braids were so tight. Um, but yeah, I had on this yellow top and I wore shorts in like sandals or I think I ended up wearing jeans because I didn't want to do too much you know but I remember it was like during the summertime and yeah it just like talking about it last night opened like a whole another capsule in my brain and I'm like well I've definitely forgot this era okay um but yeah that was my first date um yeah it wasn't bad it was it was a cool first date and me and him like talked dated a little bit after that and then I, me being the self-sabotaging person that I am, I ghosted him and... So anyways, moving along. So now we're gonna talk about relationships. Cause now it's, now it's going into relationships and it's getting a little specific. I don't know where to start, I really don't. <laughs> um, do I think all men cheat? No, I don't. I don't think all men cheat. I truly don't believe that. You can think what you want, but also think about the men that you are around. And that's all that I'm gonna say. Oh my God, I missed this one. I don't know what category this falls in, but someone said advice on having unrealistic crush crushes. I'm trying to figure out what makes the crush unrealistic. Like, are you talking celebrity? Like somebody out of touch, somebody that you will never meet, or are you just talking somebody that you have put on a pedestal and admire so much that you, that you think that they're out of your league? You have to, again, if you like somebody and you really like them that much, I don't know, just try talking to them. You don't have to be like aggressive and be like, I like you, hey. But you can just, you know, hey, what's up? I don't know if you're passing this person every day or even on Instagram, like maybe like respond to their stories, engage with their content or their posts, whatever, and just kind of let them notice you and then, yeah. Um, and oh my gosh, you guys, I got this question so many times. Right, is everybody okay? Is everybody okay? I, I hope the girls are okay. But basically how to get over a heartbreak, how to heal from a heartbreak, tips on how to get through your first heartbreak in your 20s. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Girls, it's gonna be okay. It's really gonna be okay. It is gonna be okay. First of all, I think most people go through through a breakup in their 20s anyway. Um, because I feel like once you enter your 20s, you automatically like kind of delete your high school life you're like that doesn't count i'm grown now anything that happened in high school is behind me i'm an adult that's typically how it goes um so you're most likely going to go through a breakup in your 20s but i would say to get through a breakup the easiest thing to do is to for one just accept what's happening accept that you and this person are done and it is okay okay because typically unless uh, okay it depends on the situation if you're going through a heartbreak, most times it's not us. And I say us as the people, as the people asking. We're, we're us, okay? We're in this together. Um, but it's typically not you. The person typically did something to you, hurt your feelings. They literally broke your heart. You didn't do something to them and then now you're heartbroken about it. That does happen, but Let's say the scenario is what I'm saying now. I would say the first tip to healing from a heartbreak is accepting it, acceptance. You have to accept the fact that that person did what they did. If the if the situation is they did something to you, you or, or if they if you did something to them, you you gotta accept the fact that you did what you did too. But you have to accept the fact that they did what they did, and they were not considerate of your feelings when they did that. So what I'm saying is most times before you get to that heartbreak stage, before you get to that stage of you guys breaking up and never speaking, 
you have most likely given that person a chance after a chance after a chance and now here we are you know what i'm saying so you just have to accept the fact that that person doesn't respect you and you don't somebody that doesn't respect you doesn't deserve you basically is what i'm saying feel what you're going through don't try to cover it up and be heartbroken today and be on a date tomorrow because that's not really going to that's like putting a band-aid over a freaking sore you know that needs to be stitched up um so it's like you need to just feel what you're feeling it's okay to feel pain it's okay to feel and deal with what you're going through um now i do think and that's what my next one is going to be is to move on i do think that dating does help but you have to do it when you're in a in a place where you have accepted and kind of healed from your heartbreak do not be trying to go out with people and dating people at the day after because you're gonna continue that cycle and you're gonna take out whatever you were feeling with that last person on this new person even if it's not intentional that's what broken people do that's what hurt people do so you need to really um you know deal with that get right within and then move on and just cry girl cry let it out that's all you could do like that is the easiest way is it well first of all it's never gonna be easy Breaking up, uh, breaking up, heartbreak, whatever you want to call it, is never going to be easy, especially when you're used to somebody and you thought you and this person were going to be together forever and blah, 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 and then, ooh, sorry, and then, boom. It's not easy. Um, but yeah, you girls will be okay. Take it from somebody who has recently got over a heartbreak. If you want to call it that, that's, we're going to talk about that a different day. But that's the closest thing I've ever had to a heartbreak. And I just had to sit and accept it was what it was. What was done, what was done. And there was no coming back from that. <laughs> and also, what helps when you're in distress, when you're going through your depression from this heartbreak, write the pros and cons down. It's okay. It sounds over dramatic, but write the pros and cons down and see what you're really missing. What are you crying over? Why are you so sad? Why are you so heartbroken? When you write it down, you're gonna be like, I'm not missing much here, am I? No. Oh, I did miss one earlier because this person asked a few questions. But this one says, dating someone who smokes a lot when you're not a smoker. Um, I mean, it could work as long as that person doesn't smoke in front of you if you really don't like smoking that much then that person should respect your boundaries and not be smoking around you. But if y'all know a smoker, a smoker is gonna smoke anywhere, anytime, and don't care whether you smoke or not because they're so used to smoking. They're like, it doesn't smell. It's not gross. It's not this, it's not that. And you're over there like, <laughs> But uh, I don't know, it's just something you just gotta work out and it's probably, I hate to be negative, Okay, I'm not going to be negative. That's just, a, I'm not going to say it. Y'all just need to work that out. And if that person does not respect your boundaries, then you guys, we have to learn. This is going to be a movement. My memory card was full again. And I finished my little drop. But um, basically, I just think we need to learn to just let people go when they don't align with us is basically what I'm saying. And stop forcing things to work. You are going to be in situations where you're dating someone and you guys again like i said earlier from are from different backgrounds or had different upbringings and what may be normal to them is not normal to you and vice versa and you guys work that out but there's just some things that are what we call deal breakers and there's just some things that you just gotta learn this person is who they are this isn't gonna work and i need to move forward like i don't know why we program ourselves to be stuck with people and to waste time basically like imagine wasting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years on somebody just to end it anyway over that first initial problem. Let me say something, oh my gosh. So have you guys ever noticed that when you're dating someone, talking to somebody in a relationship, married, whatever that initial issue was from the beginning is always that same reason that ends things. 
I would say like 95% of the time that is the case. And it's like, had you just at that moment been like, you know what, I'm good. You could have just moved on with your life. But now you've put yourself through this trauma. You've put yourself through this, this decade long relationship just for it to end in this person not to change or whatever. It's, it's really crazy. It's really crazy. Sometimes, child. Let's talk about how girls leave mentally before physically and how it eats us up. I don't feel like it eats us up. I feel like we leave gracefully. When you have detached from somebody mentally, when you physically walk away, you're like at peace instead of like leaving abruptly or like again, dealing with like a heartbreak or something random happening. I think it's a lot easier when you process who this person is and what they're doing or their patterns and you just kind of move on from it. I don't, I don't think it eats us up. I don't know. If you can explain that to me, let me know. But personally, I don't think that it does. So someone said, what are some of your red flags when it comes to relationships? <laughs> Everything is a red flag to me. A red flag to me, they, they asked me. They didn't ask, this is not a group question now, okay? A red flag to me is somebody with a lot of trauma. And we all have trauma, but trauma, somebody who has trauma and doesn't want to talk about it, doesn't want to face it, doesn't want to seek help from it, um, doesn't want to go to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who just like feeds off of that trauma, like, They've been through traumatic things and now they're traumatizing you or they're using that. Okay, so what happens is when you deal with somebody that's like had a lot of trauma or a hard upbringing or whatever the case may be, what happens is they've been through so much that they feel like people are, they feel entitled and they feel like uh, you're supposed to kind of feel bad for them and just kind of be like, oh, well, you had a crappy childhood so like okay I'll let you get away with this oh I forgot this happened to you so I'm not gonna be mad at you it's okay no no so for me personally I need somebody to come to me healed <laughs> or I need somebody who is genuinely working on being healed and wants to move past that trauma some people really live in chaos and enjoy chaos and they don't really want to move past the trauma because again their trauma is their crutch their trauma gets them lets them get away with a lot of things in life so yeah you know what i just realized that's why it looks weird in the back i was wondering mm, mm -mm. well here we are anyways doesn't matter so wow that's really gonna annoy me now mm. anyways um so yeah red flags are also that's like my biggest red flag because that red flag comes with a lot that comes with a lot of little things after but i'm just gonna name that being one of them so we're not here all day because like i said everything is a red flag to me now we're gonna talk about friends and friendships guys <laughs> let me go back down to the bottom let me see let me see okay someone said best friends that are jealous of your relationship and try to push your boyfriend away girl i'm just going off of assumptions here you know for a lot of this 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 chit chat is just vibes we're just going on vibes okay the chances that your best friend really just is doesn't like your boyfriend and is trying to push him away is very slim I'm so sorry. If you're calling this person your best friend, it's very slim. You have most likely told your best friend something about this man and she no longer likes him or thinks that he is fit for you. So she probably is trying to sabotage it now. I'm not, I'm not even gonna hold you. She probably is trying to sabotage y'all's relationship or whatever you have going on. But there's a backstory to that, I'm sure. But I highly doubt that your best friend just doesn't want you to be with this man. Unless she just is, I don't know, obsessed with you, but I just don't see that being the case. A lot of times, friends don't like their friends, boyfriends, because you've gone to your friends and complained that he this and he that, and he did this and he did that. 
Are we supposed to like him after that? I, you know, I support all my girls. If you want to go back to your man, do what you do. As long as he's not hurting you physically, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> cool. But if you have told your friends something about a guy, it's going to stick. Even if we smile and say, hey, Mr. So-and-so, hey, friend's boyfriend, we don't really like him like that. We don't. We've accepted it. You love him. He loves you. But we're not, we're not really going for it, you know? So there's probably a reason there. So you might want to think about that. And she probably just doesn't want to keep bringing it up. So she's probably like being a very overprotective friend. And maybe you guys do need to have a conversation about that and check her about that and be like, look, this is my man and this is what it is. And yeah, and just don't tell her nothing no more. Like, yeah. Okay, so this one is about a roommate, but we're gonna put this in the friend category. Um, someone said, dealing with a roommate that only talks bad on you when their boyfriend is there. Girl, ignore her. <laughs> ignore her. Um, as long as it's not getting violent or like, well, I guess it is offensive either way, huh? As long as it's not getting violent, she's not touching yourself, tampering yourself, bothering you, coming in your space. I wouldn't pay it any mind. Girls do that when they're around boys, whether it's her boyfriend, a crush, just a male in general. Girls don't know how to act around men. They act a plump fool, okay? <laughs> so I would just ignore it. Um, and if she's trying to be like friendly and in your face and buddy buddy when he's not around, I would <laughs> skirt, don't talk to me. We have nothing to talk about and keep it pushing, okay? Friends with weird energy. That's not your friend. We have got to stop being around people that do not align with us. If you're not a weirdo, you should not be hanging out with weirdos. The same thing applies to friends. Just like I said, with relationships, dating, the same thing applies. Actually, you gotta be even stricter with, well, gotta be strict with these men too, but you gotta be even stricter with your friends. Um, I feel like friends, like for me, I consider my friends family. So I take my friends very seriously. Um, so yeah, if you feel like somebody's weird, I would speak on it because sometimes people don't know. Sometimes they're not aware. Again, we have different upbringings. We're raised differently. So we'll maybe consider weird to you, maybe normal to them. And if you just tell them like, hey, I feel like I don't like how you spoke to me the other day. And they're like, oh, like for me, if, if my friends say something to me like, Tasha, I didn't like how you talked to me. I'm gonna be like, sorry, my bad. I'm gonna try not to do that again. But you have other people that will react to that and be like, I didn't say nothing to you. I didn't talk to you no type of way. Woo -doo -woo -woo. And it's just like, all righty. So there's going to be no resolve here, right? Yeah. So again, if somebody's weird, check up the deuces. Oh my God, that was such an old lady thing to say. Check up the deuces. What? Oh my God. Okay, someone said the kind girl that no one wants to be friends with. Um... I would just try, say try to find other kind people to be friends with. Don't force yourself on anybody. It's not worth it. You're going to build disgenuine friendships like that. So you just have to genuinely find your friend group. Um, but yeah. How do you maintain great relationships with friends while balancing a busy lifestyle? So all my friends be busy. <laughs> So if I'm being 100% honest, and this is gonna go into the next category and the next question that I just scrolled past, you have to have like-mind friends. You have to have friends that kind of, again, align with you. If, if you have a friend that's always available because they're not doing anything, they're not busy, they're gonna feel some type of way. Oh my God, you're always busy. Oh my God, you can never hang out with me. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And you're just like, girl, I'm busy. If you have friends that are busy, you guys will schedule time to hang out with each other. You guys will appreciate your time together, you know? It's just a whole different thing when you have friends that are on the same type of time with you. So this next question is going to be kind of like lifestyle, adulthood type of questions. But someone said, living in Atlanta, is there any pressure to be extremely successful to keep up? No. And you can look at it that way if you want, um, but I don't think that's the case. I feel like, and I'm gonna speak for myself, I have a very, very successful group of friends. Um, 
and all that does is motivate me. I personally do not feel pressured to do the things that they're doing because it's not a competition, because we're really friends. If you feel like you're in competition with somebody, I hate to break it to you, you guys are not friends. You guys ain't kin folk, okay? But I feel like with my group of friends, we literally motivate each other. Like, I can see my friend do something and I can feel motivated like, wow, you just did a huge thing. I feel like that is now obtainable, you know? If you hang around people that complain all day and are stuck in their ways and don't want to do better in life, you're going to be that next person. You're going to be that next person in that circle to have that kind of mindset. So I personally love being around people that are very successful, that are uplifting, that are motivating. And again, you just have to find your right friend group because there are people that are successful, but guess what? They're mean. They're in competition. Those are not the people for you. Those are going to be the people that are making you feel pressured to keep up. That those are gonna be, be the people that are making you feel insecure. So um, yeah, I don't feel pressure. I literally feel motivated every day. And you can't look at it negatively. I think people think of it as trying to keep up or pressure because it seems unattainable or because it seems out of reach, which is the same thing, unattainable, out of reach, whatever. But I think a lot of people think it's pressure when it's not, it's really not. So I got this question a few times too. And I'm just trying to figure out what is this about? Like, did I ever say this? But, okay. but I was asked, am I afraid of motherhood? No, but I'm afraid of, <laughs> I'm afraid of who I will bring a child into this world with. That's what I'm afraid of. Um, I'm not afraid of being a mother. I think I'm gonna be a great mother one day. I really do think I will. I have the patience. I like kids. I, don't, I can't say love because I don't have them yet, but I like kids. Um, and I think that I, I will be a good mother. Now my issue is bringing, who am I bringing this child into the world with? That is the scary part to me. And I, I think y'all are not scared enough about that part for me. Y'all are not scared about who you're bringing a child into this world with, which scares me. And I typically don't talk about like motherhood or wanting to have kids or anything like that because I don't, I genuinely do not desire kids until I feel like I have met that right person to bring kids into the world with. So that does not mean that this person is going to be perfect and we're going to have this fairy tale world. That does not mean that because y'all love to take this out of context because there's no telling. I can meet somebody and think he's perfect and then the baby comes and the things don't work out. You never know. But when I feel like that time is right for me, that is when I will have that desire to be a mother and to bring a child into the world. Does that make any sense? Um, I don't desire a child with no man in the picture. I don't desire to be a single mother. I'm not saying it cannot happen to me, but I do not desire to be a single mother. I do not desire to raise a child on my own. So I am single. So that's why you guys do not hear me speak about motherhood or kids or anything like that because baby, we're skipping a step. Why are we asking about kids and we do not see a man in the picture? Okay. Um, I'm probably gonna wrap this up because I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> that's why I said I'm not gonna be drinking um, in every single video because absolutely not. Oh my God, my leg hurts. Oh, I can't wrap this up. There's another category I forgot. <laughs> Someone also asked, just curious, what are your thoughts about LGBTQ community plus do you support? My thoughts are, do what makes you happy. I don't care. Like, I hope that's not coming off disrespectful, but I literally don't care. And do I support everybody? Absolutely. It has nothing to do with me. Why? I, I honestly do not get the bash and the hate that people have for the LGBTQ community because it's like, what does it have to do with you? If she no longer wants to be called she and he wants to be with he, what that got to do with you? Why do you care? Why do you care? That doesn't affect me in any way, shape or form. I personally literally do not care, but I'm not saying that in like a, I don't care about you kind of way. I'm saying like, I do not care about how you live your life, who you decide to love. Like, all that comes down to is who you wanna be with at the end of the day. Why are we so concerned about people's 
relationships or their sexual preferences what does that have to do with this as long as people are not harming people and they're being kind i don't care it's not offending anybody somebody being um lgbtq is not offensive because heterosexual people are offensive every day nobody wants to talk about that okay what have you learned in your 20s was another question that i got a lot I have learned that I need to live my life. I need to live my life because I'm going to be going into my 30s and I'm going to be buck wild. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's going to happen. I'm about to be buck wild when I hit my 30s because what happened in my 20s? Nothing really happened. It was a blur. It was boring. Um, and it's time for me to, to spice it up. So I would say live your life, do everything, anything that comes to mind, do it. If it's reckless, do it. I'm so sorry. Do it. Everything except drinking and driving. I did. I said, don't do that, but do it and stay safe. But other than that, do it. Just do it. Go on the dates, go on the trips, do the random nights. I don't know. Just do it all. Okay. Do all because I'm regretting not doing a lot and it's so embarrassing. Ugh. Okay, so the last topic is gonna be pop culture slash celebs slash yeah. <laughs> so someone asked, talk about kinks and how people talked about the things the things young Miami says she liked. So I've also seen this topic a lot on Twitter too about people kink shaming and <laughs> okay so first of all love young miami love her life you know do what you do gorgeous girl successful girl whatever i don't i get i know what they're talking about because she said she liked golden showers and people were talking about that but this is this is not about her specifically I genuinely think that people need to keep them kink, their kinks to themselves. Keep it to yourself. We don't need to know what you like, how you like it. You're only you and your partner need to know that. Are you trying to sell? I, I be feeling like people are trying to sell themselves. Why they be going on the internet talking about they like people spitting in their mouths and peeing on them and doing all types of things. And you know, this is a judgment free zone, but also like, I'm kind of with the people who say it's okay to kink shame because again, I did not need to know. I did, I don't need to know those things about you. And there's something that I may do that you will never do. You know, just like with anything else in the world though, there's some things that people are gonna like and there's gonna be some things that people don't like. Um, but I just think we should just keep things to ourselves, okay? I don't know why everybody feels like they have to be so vocal on their sexual, like being sexually liberated, I guess. I, I don't know if that's the correct term, but like, we don't care. We don't care, we don't care, we don't care. Someone said Blueface and Krishan. <sighs> what they be saying, take me out the group chat, cause I'm tired. I know Krishan loves that man so much and I know he probably loves her too. I don't know what it is. Sometimes it's not love though. I don't know what the correct term is for it is, but sometimes it's not love. You just have this connection with somebody and you you literally think that you have to be with them, but you don't. I don't know what they have to come. I know that she said she's pregnant now and I don't think it'd be very smart for her to bring a baby into this world. That is not me supporting um, whatever somebody's gonna insinuate in the comments, but she should not be having children is what I'm saying in general. So she should be making sure that she is preventing that. Um, but I don't think it'd be very smart for her to bring a child into this world. I just don't think she's healed. I don't think she's stable enough to have a child. And I say that from my heart. I say that genuinely. And I say that with a lot of love. From what I've seen, from what we have seen, I don't know this girl personally, but I don't think she's ready to bring a child into this world because it's gonna be a continuous cycle and the child's gonna go through the same thing that she did. Because what's gonna happen is she cares so much more about that man than she does even herself. She's not gonna put that child before him. And she's, just like how she said her parents aren't around, she's not gonna be around for her child. 
you know it's, it's just really sad when you really think about it um so anyways um but i do think that he is a victim as well believe it or not like i'm not saying he's a good guy but i feel like he deals with her i'm not saying that he doesn't care about her but i do think that he deals with her because he doesn't want it to escalate. Just like when a woman is stuck in an abusive relationship because they're scared of what that person may do. I do think that if he really cut her off cold turkey, I really do think that she would harm him in some kind of way, shape, or form. And it's very scary. And who's, who's to say that he won't do the same to her? I don't know, it's very toxic. And I just want them to separate. I want them to both agree to separate. That's all. I think that would be the best thing to do. But yeah, I just I just want the best for both of them, honestly. I feel like they're both really young. And this is just a learning lesson for them. It really is. I'm not trying to bash them at all. I don't like, y'all know, I don't like to talk about people. Um, but yeah, I just hope they, I hope they get together. <laughs> okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about today, baby, is Miss Lori Harvey. When I say the girls is pressed about Miss Harvey, the girls is pressed. Um, how do I feel about Lori Harvey? I feel like she is a young, beautiful, rich, successful woman living her best life. She is living the life that most girls want to live and that's the problem. I don't think there's anything wrong with her dating. I don't think Lori is considered a HOE. I don't think that she is, she does not give me provocative. She does not give me anything like that. Even if she is, that is her business. But I think that Lori is doing what every young girl should be doing. And I talked about that earlier, dating, figuring out what you like, um, exploring your options, having life experiences. She is doing that. The issue is that she's dating guys that you guys have, oh, unrealistic crushes about, and you're upset about it. She has access to these men, and you guys are upset about it. That is her life. I think when we, I think when we criticize people, we have to take off our shoes and put on their shoes. We... The average person will never be in a circle with, I don't know who the guy she's dating now, the, the actor, I forgot his name, um, or Michael B. Jordan or Future or whoever. That's not our circle. That is her circle. So those are gonna be the men that she's dating. The issue is nobody cares about your circle of DeMarcus, Jonathan, and Timothy that you have in rotation, okay? I just came with the most random names. Nobody cares about them, but you're doing the same thing that this girl is doing. She is just doing it at a more high profile level, okay? So, that's how I think about that. I think Lori should continue living her life and ignore y'all, because she don't even be talking to us for real. So, you know, I respect it. And I think that you guys should stop being judgmental about a young girl living her life why shouldn't she date? And I'm just so confused about this whole narrative. What gives hoe? What is what is Lori, 26, 27? I'm not sure. We've known of her dating two, three guys in, how, in the past two, three years. Is that not normal? Like, I need people to really look at themselves when they start judging. That's all I'm gonna say. But, we're gonna wrap this up, you guys, because this lemon drop got me sleepy, honey. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was very chaotic, I will say, because the topics were all over the place. So let me know. We're gonna sound off below so that we can have um, a more smooth sailing video next time. Let me know if you guys want me to talk on specific topics, if you guys want to do advice, you know, segments or how you want to go about this. Let me know and I will make it a thing. And should we call this something? Cause me and my friend were talking earlier and she was like, you should name it something. And I was like, I was thinking that. I should be like talks with Tasha, tipsy with Tasha, tea with Tasha. You know what I'm saying? Should we call it something or just gonna be chit chat? Cause I'm at the chit chat right now. But thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Do not forget to subscribe. And yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.